investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Monday, Monday, the 16th of May, mid May, and look where we are. So the start of the turnaround on Friday was really important. It said a couple of things. It said on a very short-term basis, the markets had reached a certain point where there was a chance that some kind of short-term base could be formed. If that base held through various uh, structural uh, zigzags, let's call it, because that's what's been happening for a little while now. When we've made these lows, I call them, I wonder if I can go to this chart. I will, I'll do that. So we've got what I call the Chapman Wave Mini, Chapman Wave Roman Candle, and that was the candle of Thursday at 31.228 in the, in the Dow. We had had the same thing, I called that one, a half Chapman Wave Roman Candle. I explained in a moment, that was the one on the tw 2nd of May. And then we had one on the 24th of February. Where is that there? Uh, yes, 24th of February, right there, at 32,272. <sighs> and then we had one at uh, on the 24th of January, 32,150. The one at in January, it's a long-legged candle, has a tiny little wick, has a body that is above the low of that wick by half to two-thirds. And then what happens is it needs within a, a day or two to break above that previous high of that candle and then hold support and give a buy signal that can go to a buy mode. This one went all the way to a peak. C minus it fails instead of going to a D at 35,824. Then the next one had the same pattern, beautiful pattern, broke higher and then failed and pulled back to half of the wick, which is a really scary thing. But it didn't hold for long enough because eventually, over the period of about 90 minutes, it reversed and made an inverse Chapman Wave Roman candle, broke above the wicks half the wick's um, midpoint, and then closed and shot up all the way to a peak D at 35,372. So you see this one here was very choppy, and that's the one from the 24th of January. It was a beautiful candle. Uh, the one on the 24th was a beautiful candle, but it was even more choppy. It made a dreaded H, but then a successful H pattern, and then broke and went even higher to a peak D. That's the objective of a Chapman Wave uh, buy signal to buy mode. And then what happened is we pulled back very sharply and we made the same candle on the 2nd of May, except the body was really small. Now, over the years, I've refined these things. Uh, you know, all of us do the, 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 a, a tremendous amount of work at studying our particular techniques, refining our techniques, and talking about techniques. And I just went, I went along just as we were about to do the show. I don't usually like to do that. I put a stop in and bam, a stop got it. And now it's doing exactly what, what I wanted to see. This is just my own little trading in the e minis. Um, and now uh, the, the futures are actually a lot higher. Anyway, so what we're looking at here, the, the uh, semi Chapman Wave Roman candle, the green Roman candle, worked beautifully from the second. It screened up to 34,117. This is from 32,449, and then reversed and took out all the support levels, went to the low on Thursday of 31,228, formed a, a, a mini. It was The body was so small, but everything else about it was quite good. It, it replicated things I looked for, and we needed to close above the, the wick high of Thursday. We did that on Friday, had a really nice rally, strong rally, closed quite well, and now we've got so far an inside bar. So the big question for me, my subscribers, when I did my uh, video on Saturday, uh, another one of those long videos we had, there was so much to discuss. The big question for me was, is it possible that this is either going to be a quick failure because they keep they fading quicker and quicker, even though they, they, they rocket to the upside immediately after the Roman candle, 
Or is this now the start of something that has higher highs to come? I can't even answer the question other than to say all the technicals that I'm looking at in the very short term, the on balance volume, look at this middle chart, that's the same chart of the Dow, except now it includes um, the MACD and the stochastic and the on balance volume. Um, yes, that is very nice. It's a nice positive V-shaped pattern. The uh, stochastic has gone from 8% to 17%. That's exactly what you look for. So these technicals here are giving a, a strong buy signal that gets upgraded to a buy mode only in the stochastic. On balance gives you a nice confirmation of the reversal. The price gives you a nice confirmation of the reversal. The MACD is very weak. It hasn't done anything until the MACD crosses positive. You're not even going to get a buy mode. So we're still not even confirming the buy signal because this is only a gray leg A. We need to see the 32,390s level at the, the nine period, the pink nine period moving average hit and hit fairly soon. I think it's a possibility, but I'm not going to get carried away because the 120 minute chart, uh, 31,900 is kind of key support. It's, it's holding it so far. It's at 31,915. And then you bump into all these 32,766 and 32,820. Chapwave automated. Uh, resistance levels. Let's do one thing at a time. I'll just show you this chart right here. It turned, turned to negative to a sell mode. The, uh, the daily Dow, when the nine period moving went pink and crossed negative. And now we're going to wait to have to see how long it takes for this pink line to cross over the black line to go positive and turn green. Oh, that's going to take a lot of effort. I think there's enough evidence to say there's going to be an attempt. That's the reason why we went long on on a Friday on the sudden pullback after the gap up. And all I can say is um, let it do what it's going to do. Let the games begin. Now we're looking at the S&P, also a, a nice turnaround. S&P is trading down just 11 at 4,012, having slipped down to the 39.83 level. That's 30 points higher. This is very nice action. It's not great. It's just very nice action. Actually, the technicals here are still working very hard to turn up, but they are at least showing the signs. Now let's talk about this. You see this weekly chart of the S&P? That's a red Chapman Wave Roman candle at a low. I forgot to talk about this. Uh, did I talk about it for this? Uh, yes. So the, the, that's the same pattern that we see in the weekly chart of the, uh, the Dow. From the close on Friday. So this is a chart. We've got to type it in. Chapman Wave Roman candle, a red one at a low. It has more or less the same connotations as the green one, but uh, it is still red, meaning we haven't any, changed any signals yet to even think of a buy signal. So a lot of work needs to be done. In fact, at 32,100 in the Dow, you're ready to see uh, the 32,400s. The S&P right now trading at 4011 you need to see 4044 pierced and the attempt to get to the 40 period moving average in the daily chart of 4094 90 points above almost a thousand Dow points i don't know that's going to be tough but now this is the big, the big issue right now are the cues are they going to come back are they going to show some strength finally we'll talk about that when i return of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network at CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so this, we'll continue, but I, I, I wanted to get to this because it was asked of me, uh, could I post the Devon chart, Devon Energy? I've been talking about it being quite positive, and certainly if it breaks into the 70 level, that'll be very good. Yes, it's at 71.16, and one of the things that I've been looking at, especially over the weekend, and I mentioned it on my, for my subscribers to my uh, opening call in my uh, uh, lengthy uh, video on Saturday with the market overview, I said I think crude oil is actually doing very well here. We want to get into... Um, uh, back into the uh, crude oil area, uh, that's oil sector, and uh, we did we did get one for those of you uh, subscribers who were able to get in. To the, I, I sent out the uh, my daily uh, opening call newsletter uh, early, and if you got to the traders corner in time, you would have been able to uh, get in plenty of time underneath the pr the price that I wanted out. Particular, I especially said if we are going to see a rally. I would prefer at this point because we've got some stocks that I consider under the radar that are really in the wheelhouse of what could work here without um, going into the more volatile areas that are very oversold and should have very big bounces. We are already in that. So I want you to spread the whole portfolio out into different areas. So I had said, let's go for a very low priced uh, stock in the oil sector, because if if prices are going up, rather than put a lot of money to work, and the percentage might be the same, but your risk is a little different because it's such a high price. Let's choose a pretty good stock at a lower price, a single digit, and see what we can do with that. Well, so far it's up uh, about maybe six percent. The day's young, crude oil could do anything, but the thinking was that I want a very diverse portfolio for subscribers right now. And the reason being that this is a very diverse market. There's the old school, and that's what we want to be in. There's the new school, meaning the school that says there have been so many huge 60, 70, 80% hits to the downside in the NASDAQ. Maybe now we've got a kind of a fresh start. Let's see if we can deal with that in a certain way. I'm trying to deal with it in, in, in a certain way. 
I, I will see. And now the question was, is this a leg F or a brand new B in the weekly chart? I'm not doing anything. I'm just putting in as an as as a sequence of A B C D E F G. There's never an H, and I'm going sequentially higher. And let's call it an F in the weekly and a leg D in the monthly. Devon Energy up 255. It's doing beautifully. It's up 3.71. And that's what I mean, that the lower price stock is up 6% um, for the same amount of work. I'd much rather at this particular point still having a nice big cash position. We have put money to work, but I've made sure that we are, we've taken profits in a lot of areas um, and we're trying to put money to work. Okay, now the Dow's only down 49, the S&P's only down 6. This is exactly so. My Chapman Wave trend gauge reading on Friday was very low. It said to me, that there should be my tradition of the reading. I, this is Richard Arms' short-term trading index. I have nothing to do with it. I, I just I only see the numbers, and I put the numbers in here for decades. Um, and the decades say that the percentage correct on my reading of certain numbers are on the high side or the low side of his gauge. I call it the Chapman Wave Chin gauge because I only use the numbers. Um, has had a a 90, 93 to even more percentage accuracy rate. I don't know if it'll stay that way, but at least it's still, it's still working. And it gave us the pullback. I have no idea because this is the pullback that says the Dow should pull back regardless of how high the futures are and go negative. And then they should be buying. And over a period of the day, usually with this particular index, there'll be an attempt to get to a plus side. We've got a lot of work to do. We're down 40 still. We'll see if we can go positive. And then I can check this off. Otherwise, I have to put it in as inaccurate, put an X on it, uh, even though it's done everything that we would like. So another question came in. Uh, Frank says, DBA worth a hard look today. So the DBA we've had, uh, we actually had for over two years. Have we gone from the 1377 level? Is it two years? Maybe not. So let me just check. Since, um, yeah, July of 2020. So nearly two years. 1377, we've taken a little bits off, but mostly we've, we're long. I was going to add to it, but I decided I want a more spread out uh, a portfolio for subscribers in this very volatile period. It, it, is, it was at 2127 uh, just uh, six, seven sessions ago. Today it's at 22.72. It's up 2.43 percent today, up 54 cents at 22.72, and that has to do with wheat. The moment I saw that wheat is a problem, I said, "Oh man, that's a that's, that is the part of the puzzle in this mega, what was a mega bull market, which has been under pressure now for since uh, it depends which index, but let's just say November, December, January, and that's where the tops were made, and now we've pulled back very sharply." Because if you start to see the grains, even stocks like SIG, which is GIS, sorry, GIS, which is what's SIG? Uh, Signet Jewelers. Nah, nah, I'm not interested in jewelers right now. This is uh, General Mills. They're going to pay the penalty at some point. Yes, you can raise prices, but then you just you bump into a just a, a, a barrier, and then you have to start picking up the costs. At this point, you can still. Uh, you can still pass on the cost a little bit longer. I said about a week or two ago, I said, I think that the higher rates in the, in the grains, the agricultural sector, I think it's got about another six weeks before we really start to see uh, the pressure on Heinz Ketchup, that's the H, uh, KHC, uh, doing still very nicely, 44.29, up a penny. Uh, well, the most recent high was in the 44 range. And that was the high of June-ish of uh, last year. Went down to 33s and come back in the U-shaped formation. Uh, this is it's still doing very nicely. Uh, but KHC, Kraft Heinz Company, had a high back in, oh, uh, yes, that's right. It, it, it became a, a joint company. It was Kraft and it was Heinz. And then they married. I won't make any jokes about that. But we've got 80, a 97.77 was the high in February of 2017. Had a little bit of a dip uh, down to the uh, uh, teens, and now it's come back very, very well. So, yes, we'll see what happens. So that's what I'm looking at. I don't want to go through the other grains. I want to go on to other things that we want to discuss. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Now, yeah, I, had to, I actually did watch uh, the Celts game last night, yesterday afternoon. 
uh, mostly so that I could discuss a little bit with my, my son. Otherwise, um, I wouldn't really watch. Um, although, I, I mean, it's a fantastic game. I just, you know, I like playing sports. I'm not, I, I do watch, but I really like playing more than anything else. Um, so, yeah, it was a great game, and uh, congratulations. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, oh, that's right. Pat says, GIS and shrink the packages. I've been speaking about this. It's a big deal. I've been talking about this for ages. This is the phase in the, um, in the inflationary cycle where you pay more for less. It's just as simple as possible. The uh, eight ounce becomes a seven ounce or six ounce. Uh, yeah, the pound gets, gets shrunken down. The bottles get smaller. That's just the way it is. And then there's a certain point that they can't keep doing that. All right, I'll be back in a moment. There's a ton to talk about. And now I'm going to go through a whole bunch of stocks that I didn't finish up on uh, um, Thursday or Friday, which I'll do as soon as I return. Dow is down 85, S&P is down 11. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Just a real quick question about the SWIR, the Sierra Wireless. A question from Peaky. I'm just going to say, you know what? This is your kind of stock. I'm looking at the monthly, not the daily or the weekly, but the monthly says, um, that there's a chance that at 21.09, uh, this is in play. For, I don't know what reason. I don't know what the movie is. Look at this. This is one of those. I usually see this in single-digit stocks, just straight up for one, two, three, four bars. You have no choice. If you want in, you've got to grab it right here. I'd have a stop just for the moment. This is you. This is not for everybody. But for you, I'd say the stop should be um, about 19.50. Uh, just for the moment, and if it's able to hit 21 point, 21, 19, 21 29 is the high today. If it goes to 21 30, oh, 21 35, um, 
just have a trading stop of $1.50. It's going to pull back. But just to get a feel for it right now, uh, I would say, yes, there's something going on. And I've seen this with a couple of the wireless companies. And I'm, I'm just wondering, because more and more people are beginning to say, you know, these, these, these uh, media, the, the, you know, the communications, the bills are getting really high and they keep bumping them up. Do I need everything? I keep saying that as well, but I keep I keep still say I haven't done anything. I keep saying I'm going to do any something, but I haven't. But I will because I mean it's just crazy. And not only that, you can piggyback on some like a Verizon or a Comcast, or especially a Verizon by going to someone else who actually uses the Verizon line and charges quite a lot less. So I'm just saying there's something going on here. I don't know exactly what it is in Sierra Wireless. SWIR, the day might be young and we could just be pulling back right now. I said green, I mean, one, two, three, four. This is the fifth huge green candle. Obviously, it's due for a bit. But if you if you want to get in, I would I would start a position now with I, I would call it a fairly wide stop. I don't you know, there's a you know, 2115 right now. I said 19.50. So that's uh, it's it's about, you know, it's about seven or eight percent. I don't usually do that for a starter position, uh, but I, I'm just saying that I do like it, and it's it has these very sharp pullbacks. This is the move that could go higher, and when it stops, you've got to be ready for the big pullback. But just to get a feel for it, I'd say yeah, this is where you might want to be nibbling on that. Um, Xfinity does that, yes, I agree. So yeah, we're looking at so uh, um, okay, uh, where where are we here? Oh, okay. So now I can go through those. those no, I haven't finished. Crude oil. Crude oil is still up some. Uh, yes, it's up 92 cents at 111.42. This is leg D. It's in the rectangle formation going to, remember the rule of thumb in the rectangle formation? If there is a series of higher highs and higher lows, then there's a really good chance it could go to the previous major, major high. That was the high of the 24th of uh, March in the continuous contract, 116.07. And it could go just under, right on, or just above, and then be careful because if it pulls back uh, about a third, it can even go halfway into the whole rectangle formation. So far, this is acting quite well. But the most important thing about it is that the weekly chart is refused within the rectangle formation so far to break down to make the, the H pattern within the rectangle. And that's just saying... So far, there's strength, but then when you look at it in much greater detail, you see each new high in the weekly is just very modest. And it says, you know what, crude oil could be getting close to some kind of a, a, a pullback, so don't get too carried away. Meantime, back at the ranch, if you look at uh, the OIH, the OIH, the oil service, you'll see that's a little bit of a different chart. It's making lower lows and lower highs. And the monthly chart is in this other rectangle formation. It's gone to that peak D and it's now pulling back. So I'm saying be very selective. And that's why the reason why I said get some laggards to at least piggyback on, on the strength of, of, of the, the good stocks within that sector. And that's just another way to, or you just get the very best. And the question was, we were looking at Devon Energy. We can look at T, uh, T, T. M O no. T O oh, man. T H O. No T M O. What is T H O? Oh, Thor Industries. Oh, that should be doing well now in the stock. Isn't that those uh, utility, those uh, four wheel uh, drive outdoor vehicles? Or the, I don't know if they're electric or not. Anyway. So, why, why, oh, MRO, MRO, we're back to normal. There we go. MRO is Marathon Oil, doing very nicely today. So these have been leaders. Just keep following them to see exactly where the big picture is in this particular sector. Okay, here we go. Uh, T-R-O-W, that's TRO. I discussed this a long time ago. So T-R-O price actively managed funds, and it went from an all-time high of 224 with a double top of 223.24 a couple of weeks later, that V-shaped pattern, I'd said, be careful because you've got the left side. I took it away. I'll put it back. The left side high was much stronger than the right side. Look at that failure. This is that deflection lower, that rectangle deflection lower in the MACD. Stochastic turns down, didn't even get to 80%. And then it plummeted down to the 114s. 100 points down, 
Now it's ready for some kind of a bounce. Yes, I'm going to put the TR tro, TR ro, T -ro price actively managed funds in at least the counter trend bounce category right now. Don't get too carried away. I still think of it right now as a bounce. I haven't got proof yet that this is more than just a low that was made and that we've got to see evidence of strength. And that has to come by Wednesday or Thursday. Let's put that down arrow there. So T R O W at 121 round number right now, down 95 cents. Yes, it should attempt this week to try to get to the 122 to 125 level. Hmm, it's a big difference between 122 and 125. It's in a lot, lot of work to do that. Next question. I, okay, here we go. So questions about Walgreens. Um, w B A. WBA, Walgreens, trading down um, from the highs. Well, first of all, the, the most important high was made December, going into January in the 54s, and it comes tumbling down to 41s. It's trading right now at 43.77. I think it's attempting to form a kind of a base. This is Walgreens Boots, Alliance Inc., uh, drug stores. Um, until it's trading on a weekly basis above 40 Six. Now let's make it 44.50. Trading on a weekly basis above 44.50. That means that intraweek you can be there, but I'm looking at a Friday close in that area. That would say to me, great. Now it's starting to form a kind of a base that says there could be a, a, a rally that involves the weekly chart rather than this, the daily. If it fails and it takes out 42, just 42, closes under 42, it says, not ready for prime time yet. Next question was a AQST, AQST, AQST is trading up very nicely. It's, oh, at $1.31, up eight cents, up a 6.5%. Now, I've, I had done some work on this. It was asked about Equestria Therapeutics. I can't remember what they do, but as it stands right now, the three green candles we've just had on a $1.31 price stock, says to me that only if you are really not, I wouldn't say risk averse, but if you're able to do your homework to say, I understand the risk involved. At this point, I don't think it's going to take out the low of Thursday, which is at 0 .9, uh, 97. It's trading uh, at 1.30. I mean, that's a big percentage move. But my eye says that it's going to try to tackle over a couple of days the 1.47s highs that were made for a few days uh, back in late April and if it's able to close above 151 in the next I'll give it a whole week closing underneath 1.10 I think this is a very nice bounce are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. We're back. So McDonald's was a question. So McDonald's, I, I, evidently they're exiting Russia, but I don't think they were a big percentage. I think they had a very small percentage. They had a big influence in Russia, but I don't think they had a big position in Russia. And look, the 200 period moving average of 245 is down to 243 right now. Made an all-time high of 271.13 back in January and took a dive down to 217 then had a beautiful run up to the 259 area and now it's pulling back so mcdonald's is in that area that says to me we don't know how the profits are going to be impacted because we don't know what the percentage is and we don't know yet what the uh, higher beef higher everything the costs are going to how they're going to be am impacted so i'm just saying that I, I think one of the one of the questions i had was if we've been along for some time, what should we do? And my answer is a real simple one. You don't have to listen to me because I don't have it and I'm not in your shoes. I'm just going to say on a purely technical basis, it's arching over. I think it's in a digestive phase. I'm not sure it's going to participate well in this particular flurry to the upside, if I'm correct in saying we should see a rally that by Wednesday or Thursday, we should get some confirmation that there's going to be more upside pressure, but it's a very mixed market. I don't think McDonald's right now is in the area that I would like to be at 243. We have a couple of stocks in the two, exactly at 244 right now. One that we got on Friday, which uh, there was a question about it, why this particular one at this particular time, because although I don't particularly like the sector, because I think the sector is extremely overbought, this particular stock has held really well. And I think that it has a chance just to have a decent percentage, not, nothing spectacular, decent percentage gain, and also to be able to go against any tide if the, if the selling uh, continues as it has all day today. Every time we've had a bounce, there's been selling pressure. If the bounce succeeds, in going plus on the Dow and holding for 35 to 45 minutes, I think it'll bring in a lot of buying. And that's where I think you'll see McDonald's start to weaken and the stock that we got on Friday. Um, just that's where the test comes in. Does it start to participate as an independent, almost uh, independent of the market itself? And then the one that um, we had got previous to that, which I said is in the area, it's the best in the area. It's it's a not an inexpensive stock in price, but it's an inexpensive uh, stock because it has all the ingredients of that particular sector plus others that tells me that it's got some, I'm looking for veracity. I'm looking for something that for subscribers says that in this particular environment, you can be long, selectively long with stops, but if it works out, you could see a decent move in these particular stocks against a backdrop that says, whew, a lot of shoes keep dropping. McDonald's, I don't think, is one of those. Next question I had was EW. I had mentioned some time ago, Edwards Life Sciences. No, this is in that same category. I think Thermo Fisher is TMO, 
which we used to have and made fabulous profits on. I think these are in the sectors that say we need a little bit more time. The one that we are now out of, that we've been in for absolutely forever, uh, Agilent. Um, I think this is a, they're all in the same category as scientific solutions, kind of sometimes medical labs, whatever it is. Um, uh, this is a sector that's going to be doing a little bit of struggling at this particular point. Next question I had was um, Walmart. Walmart, I believe, is coming out with earnings. Is that Wednesday? I think maybe Tuesday. It's made a doji candle peak, uh, peak G high, G high in the um, in the daily chart on the 21st of April at 160.77. Let me just put that in. 160.77 and that was when I say 26th of April I think I did I used to always play concerts on the 26th of April I don't know why it always worked out that way but it was one of the dates I always look forward to uh, in the years when I was a professional musician and all right so now we're down leg A whoops lowercase on the downside leg A leg B Leg C, your obligation is just not to miss any troughs or peaks. Every This is the chap wave is the waveform that never sleeps. So every single trough or peak gets a notation. And yes, this is a struggle. I, you know, Walmart, I, I have an alternate count in the monthly chart. I don't, it could be a D. And I, I just don't want to get carried away. I didn't do this double top, um, 152. In August of 2021, and November goes to 152 again, round number high. Then it pulls back sharply. Then it went to a higher high, and now I think, I think it's kind of done. I would not be surprised if Walmart, however it reacts on Tuesday, I would not be surprised if on Thursday, it's starting to show a little bit of signs of wear and tear. Most important on Walmart. Is 144 the 200 period moving average? If it starts, if it touches that, it means that's now a live wire and it's going to be a magnet. And even if it goes higher from the 200 period moving average, it'll come back. Even if it goes lower, it'll come back. It'll be stuck there and make a, a sine wave up and down movement for a while. If it closes at 152 or higher any day after the announcement of the earnings, I would say that's really good action, but it's still stuck in a range, but it is very good action. So what oh, what do you do? I didn't think I didn't I don't know if that was a question. If you've been long, I would say oh, two of them. What was the question of oh, McDonald's? I would take a little bit off. That was the question. I would take a little bit off so that you have a comfort factor, you've got a big profit. Definitely I would take enough off to make you feel very good about sleeping at night without any surprises. Walmart is a little different because Walmart, I think, is going to be in a trading band and a trading range. And it looks to me, based on everything I'm looking at right now, that it is going to, over the next three weeks, it'll test the 140 to 140 area. I hope I'm wrong because it's a great company. I'd like to see it do well. Costco is the same thing. Costco, uh, oops, I typed it in the wrong place. Wherever I typed it, I'll do it here. So Costco, and that goes with the retail because retail should be a little bit under pressure. Should yep, Costco's under the 200 period moving average. I spoke about that recently. Recently, I said I'm pretty sure that that peak D that was made in April at in the 6 uh, 17ish area, that's going to be a significant top for now. in Costco, great company. This is a great company, and the double top that was made uh, from the peak D that was made in December to the um, high that was made. Back in uh, April, you can see if I do vertical lines, this is the vertical test. Look at this, test one, test two, and look how weak it is. I would suggest to you that Costco is a little different. Here I'm going to say to you, I would more than just take a little bit off, I'd actually take a little bit more off if anyone's in Costco. Um, ARKK, ARKK, we're looking at ARK. Um, had a beautiful move from the 3510 low on Thursday. It went all the way to the... Uh, 43s, it's trading at 4233, 4392 was the high today. Uh, did it touch 44? I can't, I, I forgot to look at that. Did it touch 44? 44.11. So as I'm looking at this right now, remember I spoke about that mini chapter with Roman candle in the Dow? And what it's saying to me is that this is different to other times in that. Any rally from this particular level, I 
I'm convinced that unless we get the QQQ, the NDX 100, very oversold stocks, which are absolutely would include ARKK, moving quite a bit higher by Friday, by Friday's close, I bet I'll take time. I'll take quite a little Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500e mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, I know we're running out of time before mentioning this. Tomorrow is uh, Larry's webinar. Larry does a fabulous job with these webinars. He does really well. And he does really well for the uh, attendees. I recommend, I mean, you heard the ad just a moment ago. Absolutely true. This is just exactly what you're looking for. If you do anything, uh, if you have anything to do with trading, if you have anything to do with uh, looking at positions in, in, in the different commodities, etc., just consider it. You will learn so much and hopefully be very well rewarded. Check out front page of TFNN. And Fang, a uh, question about Fang, which is Diamondback en Energy. It's kind of stuck in a range between 142 and 119. I'd even make it narrow. I'd say it's stuck between 128 and 134. It goes above that, it can go higher. It goes below that, it can go lower. Just for the moment, it's stuck in a range, and I'm I'm a little concerned in that it is a peak F in the month in the weekly chart and a peak E in the monthly with its double top potential. I don't. I wouldn't say get out of it. What I would say is, and I wouldn't even say take a little bit off for money management. I would say. Watch it closely. If it starts to pull back under um, under 129, then maybe take a little bit off 
And if it pushes over 136 sustained position, that sounds good to me. I would not consider any of these in the oil sector shorts. The next thing I had was, what was I doing before we went to the break? I said I'd come back to it. Um, oh, ARKK. So this is the area that has to work and is down $1.53 today, down at 42.06. By Friday, by, actually by Thursday, it needs to be not just hitting, but trading the 45s. That's really imperative. And by fri Friday, it should have had at least one attempt at 46 and maybe then pull back. This is important. This is the ARK Innovation Fund. This is the first time I've been able to say, I think this is the opportunity it has to rally. It better rally. But think of the QQQ even more because that QQQ is also pulling back. It needs to get to the, three, uh, oh, to the 302, 303 level very soon. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Larry comes up next. Then you have uh, Think or Swim. You have uh, 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 Rose Day White and Tom O'Brien. Have a great check out. Both. Thank you.